you wrote the story of my life you go before you fall behind before a breath beyond my death you are with me on the way to everlasting For joining us again for praying through the Psalms and today we're taking a psalm that's really at the center of one of the major uh, moral issues of our day but even more than that it's just a classic psalm of the greatness and the glory of God we're going to study it in sections and so I'm going to ask if Lorraine would read for us uh, first of all the first section but here's where we're going we're going to look at the psalm under four different headings. One is God's knowledge of me. Two is God's presence with me. Three is God's creation of me. And then four will be God's searching of me. So he is with us. He created us. He knows us. He searches us. And there's great comfort and strength in all of this. So let's look at Psalm 139, and we're going to begin with the first six verses, Psalm 139, 1 through 6. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Wow. David here is just exclaiming and, and the greatness of God, exclaiming the greatness of God. And he is marveling at how God knows him thoroughly thoroughly knows him for example Lorraine and I have been married for over 40 years and we think we know each other and yet there are so so many areas deep within each one of us that is unknown to anyone else and sometimes we don't even know our own heart but God knows us 
thoroughly. And the good news, He knows us thoroughly and He loves us passionately. Well, look at what He says here. In the first few verses, uh, in verse 2, He knows our every movement and action. He says, you know my sitting down, my rising up. Every movement, every action. And then uh, again in that verse, He knows every thought and every motive. He says, you understand my thought afar uh, off. In other words, you understand my thought, but you know where that thought was leading to. Mm -hmm. And God also knows where that thought is coming from. Uh, verse 3, you know all my activities. He says, you comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with my ways. And that word ways also means uh, my habits, my course of life. It's the Hebrew direct, which has to do with a, a path and a, and a whole way of life. And of course, in verse 4, he knows our every word. He actually knows our words before we speak them. Didn't Jesus talk about prayer where he said, God will answer and God can answer you before you even pray it. That's how thoroughly and how completely God knows us. But that can be kind of scary. Because we like to hide things from each other. There's, there's areas of my life, uh, even though I love Lorraine dearly, there's areas of my life that I'm not always so proud that she gets to see. Sometimes I'd rather hide that area from her. Well, what about God? Are there areas in our life that we wish we could kind of hide from Him? And yet we can't. We are thoroughly known by God. And yet He loves us passionately. I'm going to ask Lorraine if you would reread verses 5 and 6 because I want to point out a word here that is very encouraging. And it is, it is the word beset in the old King James. But would you just read verses 5 and 6 for us again? Uh, you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Now, notice David is not uh, intimidated by God's knowledge of him. He's praising God for that knowledge. He, he says, it's wonderful. It's, it's overwhelming. It's too wonderful. I, I'm having a hard time even grasping this. It is high. I cannot attain it. In other words, I really can't understand, God, how you could know me so well and love me so deeply. And David knew he was loved by God. But the word in the New King James that Lorraine read, it's translated hedged in, is translated in the older versions beset. And it is the Hebrew word to sewer. And what it actually means, it means to confine something. It does mean to hedge it around, but you're confining something to protect it, to secure it. For example, in Deuteronomy 14.25, and in 1 Kings 5 and also 1 Kings 12, this word is used about guarding money. Well, why do you hedge about money or put it in something with walls uh, so that you can protect it, so that it's not lost, it's not stolen? This word is also used in Judges chapter 9, verse 31, about hedging about a city or fortifying a city. And so where he says, you beset me or you hedge me in, notice the motive of it. God is hedging us in to protect us. What do you suppose some of the things are God wants to protect us from? In His knowledge of us. He, he's pointing out He knows us, but He hedges us in to protect us. What do you think? What does God protect us from? Yeah, well, He's trying to protect us from sin. Maybe He's protecting us from our own ways, from the uh, inclinations we might have um, towards sinful things or the flesh that he's protecting us saying whoa the spirit saying whoa stop you know change your direction don't make that choice make a better choice he's always there to guide and to lead and you know I'm glad you said that we <laughs> hadn't rehearsed that ahead of time but I'm glad she said I really just wanted to hear what she would say but you know what I really believe that is the thrust of this thought that God hedges us in not just to protect us from the devil but to protect us from ourself. And now notice, if God knows us thoroughly, then He knows our weak spots. Mm -hmm. He knows our vulnerabilities. Correct. He knows those areas that we might be tempted in, and even those around us might not realize we're tempted in those areas. Mm -hmm. So God knows our weaknesses. God knows our vulnerabilities. Here's a word out of the psychology realm. He knows our triggers. 
He knows those things that will set us off. Mm -hmm. He knows us intimately. And could it be that when we pray, Lord, uh, and give us this day our daily bread, we're praying through the Lord's Prayer, and we come to that place, lead us not into temptation. Yeah. He knows where the snares are. He knows where the traps are. Yeah. And one thing that would trap me might not necessarily trap Lorraine. And he knows her, he knows me. So he might direct my path a little differently than hers. So the key is staying close to Jesus every day. Yes. And being led by him every day because he knows you. He knows you so intimately and, and so passionately. Now, I know, Lorraine, you, you love to pray. And I know you love to pray in the Spirit. Uh, how does God's knowledge of each one of us, God's intimate, detailed knowledge of each one of us, how does that maybe come into play when we're praying in the Spirit for someone? Yeah, He gives us knowledge while we're praying in the Spirit. He gives us more grace and more mercy for the person or for the situation. Uh, he, during a praying in tongues or your prayer language, you're more able to give that burden to the Lord knowing that he is already at work so we can be at peace and just continue to pray and maybe not act in front of God, meaning to uh, act and maybe get in the way of God because we're trying to do good things. Usually the praying in the Spirit will let you feel and sense what God really wants you to do, if anything. Now, let's just assume that um, you didn't know that I'm very vulnerable to donuts. Let's assume you didn't know that. But I do know that. And so you're trying to guide my path. If you didn't know that I'm very vulnerable to donuts, you probably wouldn't give me directions to go somewhere that, that, are, that take me right past the Dunkin' Donut shop. Mm -hmm. But if you knew me and that was a vulnerable place in my life, you would direct me elsewhere. And sometimes we pray for somebody and we're actually praying for something that in the end might end up hurting them. Yes. Uh, but when we pray in the Spirit, Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 says that the Spirit not only helps our weaknesses when we pray, but He knows the mind of the Lord, He the Spirit, He knows the will of God, but He also knows the Spirit that is within us. So this knowledge of God, it is just so wonderful when we, when we ponder that God knows us intimately. And that's for our good. That's for our protection. Uh, someone over the holidays wanted to bless me and they baked something for me. They put their own energy and love into it and they, they baked something and they gave, it was for Lorraine also, but they happened to hand it to me. And they, they said, I hope you guys really enjoy this. Well, I never had a bite of it. Not because she ate it all so fast, but because it had nuts in it. And this person who made it for me didn't realize that I'm allergic to nuts. So Lorraine, she knows I am, so she would never bake something for me with nuts in it, because that, that would cause a bad reaction to me. Aren't you glad that the one you're asking for guidance knows you intimately and loves you passionately? That's why David said, such knowledge is too wonderful, it's too high for me. Yeah, hey, did you ever hear of the lady who really shouldn't have donuts because of her blood sugar, but she just prayed, God, if you want me to have a donut, you make a parking space right in front of the donut shop, even though it would be very bad for her. And she goes, you know what? God gave me a spot on my 10th time around the block. It yeah. was there. So we're trying to make it happen. We can't make it happen. Trying to make God lead us. And say God and blame God for it. Yeah, in the way we want, do want Him to take us. <laughs> well, let's look at one other thought here, and that is if we jump over to verses 17 and 18, I want to tie these verses into God's knowledge of us. And, and the, the theological word, uh, God's omniscience, in other words, God's all-knowing. He, he knows everything about us. And with that knowledge, He has fashioned a plan for our lives. Look at verses 17 and 18, and we want to look for a moment on the word thought, and then another very key word there. So could you read verses 17 and 18 for us? 17, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should, if I should count them, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Wow. So he's talking about, God, you think about me all the time. Your thoughts for me are innumerable. You know me intimately, every detail of who I am, what I am. And here's a great 
a great thing to keep in mind. There's never a single moment where God isn't thinking about you. Never a single moment where God isn't thinking about you. But in the Hebrew language, the word thought, especially when used of God, is more than just a wish or something in the brain. It actually can be, in, in reference to God, plan. God, you also have wonderful plans for me. And you created me to fulfill those plans. God knows how he created us to fit in with his plan for us. So, Lorraine, you had some verses on God's plans. So we're talking about thoughts, but thoughts in God's way is actually a plan. God doesn't just think something, he plans it. Mm -hmm. so, so, what are some, some scriptures on thoughts? I have Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they would be more than be, can be numbered. So your thoughts towards us. And Psalm 92, 5. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And Jeremiah 23, you want that one? Uh, we can wait on that one. Okay. Jeremiah there where he talked about, um, I know the plans or the thoughts I have for you. It's of hope and an expected end. So the God who knows you intimately has fashioned a perfect plan for your life. Oh, the wonder of that, the glory of that. So the key is to be connected to him and to follow him. He will lead us in the way that is best for us. Well, I'm going to ask Lorraine to lead us in prayer, and then we'll have another worship break, and we'll praise the Lord, and then we'll take the next section of this psalm. But let's just meditate on that for a few moments and thank God for that, that He knows us so, so deeply, and yet He loves us so passionately, and He has crafted a plan for us. His thoughts to us are amazing. Would you lead us in prayer? Lord, we thank you how comforting a thought it is to know that you think of us, that you care for us, that you love us, that you put boundaries before us as we pray, Lord God, especially in our prayer language, Lord, that your spirit would speak to us on when to move on a situation, when to step back, Lord God. We thank you, Father, that you care, that you listen, that you know that you are always, always a step ahead of us. You know our thoughts, you know the direction of our thoughts, that where it will lead us, where and God, I pray every thought that we think, God, that you will guide it to be um, in your plan for us. And we thank you, God, again, how wonderful to know that you think of us. Amen. 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 Let's just take a moment and worship along as Nicole leads us in that chorus again. I can't run, I can't hide. Even darkness is a light from the lowest place to the highest praise. You are worthy. Amazing love, how can it be? Far too wonderful for me. There's only one thing left to say. You are worthy. Well, 
praise the Lord. Let's look at verses 7 through 12. And I'm going to entitle this, God's presence with me or with us. We've seen God's knowledge of us, and now we want to see God's presence with us. And the theological term here is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. But not just that He's present everywhere, He's present with us wherever we can go or wherever we are. Let's listen to verses 7 through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall, hide, shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day, and the darkness and the light are both alike to you. Yes, wow, what a, what a phenomenal uh, thought. that There's nowhere you can go but what God is not present with you there. And God has ordained a plan for you. God knows you intimately. God knows you uh, better than you know yourself. And yet He's always with us. There's never a time when God isn't with us. Jesus said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 23 and 24 uh, fits right in here with this whole idea of God is a God who's not just always way off somewhere else, but He's a God who's present with us. Jeremiah 23, verse 23, Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? He says, I'm not a God far, that's far off. I'm a God that's near. Uh, Paul, in preaching in Acts 17, he talked about this God who's so very near, and he said in verse uh, 27, so that we should seek the Lord in the hope that we might grope for Him and find Him, though He's not far from each one of us, for in Him we live and move and have our being. And then he quotes some of the, the Greek philosophers there. He's like, God's not very far from any of us, but we just have to go after Him. And he uses the analogy of someone who's blind and they're kind of groping to find the way. But if you'll grope for God, you'll find Him. He's not far away. And not only do we think of God's presence with us as being comfort. When, usually when I say God is present with us, we think, oh, that's comforting. But He does more than just comfort us. He leads us. In verse 24, there's a part of the prayer, and lead me in the way everlasting. But He also holds us. He's present with us to lead us in the way we should go, to comfort us, <clears throat> excuse me, in the situation we're in, and to hold us. What are some passages you had on being held by God? Yeah, I looked up Psalm 63, 8. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. In Psalm 73, 23, Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. In Isaiah 41, 13, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Well, He's always with us, like a, a strong parent holding the hand of a child. Mm -hmm. I'm sure all of us can think of a time when we were a child and maybe something scary was going on. We just wanted to hold our parent's hand. Just knowing we were in that hand that was so much bigger and stronger than ours brought us assurance. But when we're holding that hand, He can lead us and guide us. An interesting phrase here in verse 9. He says, if I take the wings of the morning. Well, the wings of the morning was a Hebrew phrase that had to do with the first rays of sunlight. And we could put it this way. I could move at the speed of light, Lord, and I can never get away from you. You're always with me, Lord, no matter where I am. I want to point out one more thought from verse 12. He says, Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. In other words, God knows us so intimately, and He's always with us. But He says, Not even the darkness will hide. Now here's an interesting thought. It's the Hebrew word, chasak, 
And what that word has to do, it has to do with darkness and that sort of thing. But here's the light. God is with us, protecting us even from what we can't see. Now, there's some things about ourselves we're not seeing yet. He protects us from those things. But there are some traps and some evil that we don't even see yet. It's like we're in darkness, but it's not dark to him. He sees it. He's present. And he protects us even from things we don't see. Do you suppose there's some times that maybe accidents would have happened that didn't happen, but it was God's presence with us? So we'll never even know. But we have enemies and there are snares and traps that we do not even see. Well, I think we should just stop right now and let's thank the Lord for His presence with us. That He's always present with us and He's always holding us. And Lorraine, as you close us in prayer and then we'll close with, Nicole will close us with a song. Uh, perhaps there's some people watching this that they're struggling. And they need to know that God is with them. That God knows everything about them and He loves them. And that He is right now holding them. Would you pray for those people and just lead us in prayer? Thank you, Lord. Let each one know, Father, your, your touch, your, your arms around them. And if they need you today, Lord, in any way to comfort them, that they would sense and feel your great arms around them, that they would know that you love them so much that you know their thoughts and their ways and that you are already ahead of them protecting them, Father sometimes protecting us from ourselves, sometimes protecting us from the enemies. But Lord, I pray right now by the power of the blood of Jesus that your spirit would just awaken, awaken each one of us, Father, to your love and your care and your sense and your touch that we might be guided by you each and every day. Father, let them know you see them, you hear them, and you love them, and you know them. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's close with worship. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. you wrote the story of my life. You go before, you fall behind. Before a breath beyond my death. You are with me on the way to everlasting. Oh, I can't run, I can't hide. Even darkness is a light. From the lowest place to the highest praise, you are worthy. Amazing love, how can it be? me God and know my heart try me know my anxious thoughts find the wicked 